Section 45 of the Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marianne. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 3. Section 45. Selected Ballads by Unknown Authors. Johnny Cock. Up Johnny Ray's in a May morning, called for water to wash his hands, and he has called for his good grey hounds that lay bound in iron bands, bands, that lay bound in iron bands. He'll brusque, you'll brusque, my noble dogs, you'll brusque and make them bound, for I'm going to the Braidscar Hill to ding the Dundeer down. Johnny's mother has gotten word of that, and care bed she has tain. Oh, Johnny, for my benison, I beg you'll stay at hame, for the wine so red and the well bacon bread, my Johnny shall want nain. There are seven forsters at Pickerham's side, at Pickerham where they dwell, and for a drop of thy heart's blood, they would ride the fords of hell. But Johnny has cast off the black velvet, and put on the Lincoln twine, and he is on the good green wood as fast as he could gang. Johnny look at east, and Johnny look at west, and he look at aneath the sun, and there he spied the dun deer sleeping aneath a bush o' one. Johnny shot, and the dun deer lap, and she lap wondrous wide, until they came to the wan water, and he stemmed her of her pride. He has ta'en out the little pen-knife, twas full three-quarters long, and he has ta'en out of that dun deer, the liver-butt and the tongue. They ate of the flesh, and they drank of the blood, and the blood it was so sweet, which caused Johnny and his bloody hounds to fall in a deep sleep. By then came an old palmer, and an ill death he may die, for he's away to Pickram's side as fast as he can dry. What news? What news? says the seven foresters. What news have you brought to me? I have no news, the palmer said, but what I saw with my eye. As I came in by Bradis banks, and down among the ones, the pawniest youngster e'er I saw lay sleeping among his huns. The shirt that was upon his back was of the Holland fine. The doublet, which was o'er that, was o' the Lincoln twine. Up bespake the seven foresters, up bespake they ain and all. Oh, that is Johnny O'Cockley as well, and near him we will draw. O oh, the first stroke that they gave him, they struck him off by the knee. Then up bespake his sister's son, O oh, the next ogar him die. O oh, some they count ye well right men, but I do count ye nain, for ye might well have wakened me, and ask gin I wad be tain. The wildest wolf, as in a this wood, would not have done so by me. She'd have wet her foot in the wan water, and sprinkled it o'er my bray, and if that would not have wakened me, she would have gone and let me be. O bows of you, if ye be true, in London where ye were bought, fingers five, get up believe, man hoid shall fail me not. He has killed the seven foresters, he has killed them all but ain, and that one scarce to pick her um side, to carry the bowed words hame. Is there never a bird in this wood that will tell what I can say, that will go to Cockley's well, tell my mither to fetch me away? There was a bird into that wood that carried the tidings away, and many I was the well right man at the fetching a Johnny away. Sir Patrick Spens The king sits in Dumfemmerling tone, Drink in the blued ride wine. How oh, where will I get good sailor to sail this ship o' mine? Up and spake an elder knight, sat at the king's right knee. Sir Patrick Spens is the best sailor that sails upon the sea. The king has written a braid letter and signed it with his hand, and sent it to Sir Patrick Spens, was walking on the sand. The first line that Sir Patrick read, a loud laugh laughed he. 
The next line that Sir Patrick read, the tear blinded his e. O oh, why is this has done this deed, this ill deed done to me, to send me out this time of the year to sail upon the sea? Make haste, make haste, my merry men all, our guide ship sails the morn. O oh, say nay, say, my master dear, for I fear a deadly storm. Late, late yestern I saw the new moon, with the old moon in her arm, and I fear, I fear, my dear master, that we will come to harm. O oh, our Scots nobles were right lath to wheat their cork heeled shoon, but lang hour o' the play were played, their hats they swam aboon. O oh, lang, lang may their ladies sit, with their fans into their hand, or ere they see Sir Patrick Spens come sailing to the land. O oh, lang, lang, may the lady stand, with her gold cairns in their hair, waiting for their ain dear lords, for they'll see them nay mare. Half hour, half hour to Aberdour, it's fifty fathom deep, and there lies good Sir Patrick Spens, with the Scots lords at his feet. The Bonny Earl of Murray Ye highlands, and ye lowlands, O oh, where have ye been? They have slain the Earl of Murray, and they laid him on the green. Now way be to thee, Huntley, and wherefore did you say? I bade you bring him with you, but forbade you him to slay. He was a brawn gallant, and he rid at the ring, and the bonny Earl of Murray, oh that he might have been a king. He was a brawn gallant, and he played at the bar, and the bonny Earl of Murray, was the flower among them a. He was a braw gallant, and he played at the glove, and the bonny Earl of Murray, oh, he was the Queen's love. O oh, lang will his lady look o'er the castle down, ere she see the Earl of Murray come sounding through the town. Mary Hamilton Words gain to the kitchen, and words gain to the ha, that Marie Hamilton has borne a bairn, to the highest steward of all. She tied it in her apron, and she's thrown it in the sea, says, Sink ye, swim ye, bonny wee babe, you'll ne'er get mare o' me. Down then come the old queen, gowd tassels tying her hair. Oh, Marie, where's the bonny wee babe, that I heard greets I sair? There was never a babe until my room, as little designs to be, but it was a touch of my sire side, came o'er my fair body. O oh, Marie, put on your robes o' black, or else your robes o' brown, for ye maun gang wi' me the night, to see fair Edinburgh town. I winna put on my robes o' black, nor yet my robes o' brown, but I'll put on my robes of white, to shine through Edinburgh town. When she gate up the canogate, she laughed loud laughters three, but when she came down the canogate, the tear blinded her ye. When she gaed up the Parliament stair, the heel came off her she, and lang or she came down again, she was condemned to dee. When she came down the canagate, the candidate say free, many a lady looked ere her window, weeping for this lady. Make never mean for me, she says, make never mean for me. Seek never grace for a graceless face, for that you'll never see. Bring me a bottle of wine, she says, the best that e'er ye hay, that I may drink to my wild wishers, and they may drink to me. And here's to the jolly sailor lad, that sails upon the fame, but let not my father nor mother get wit, but that I shall come again. And here's to the jolly sailor lad, that sails upon the sea, but let not my father nor mother get wit, o' the death that I maun dee. Oh, little did my mother think, the day she cradled me, what lands I was to travel through, what death I was to dee. Oh, little did my father think, the day he held up me, what lands I was to travel through, what death I was to dee. Last night I washed the queen's feet, and gently laid her down. Under the thanks I gotten the nicht to be hanged in Edinburgh town. Last nicht there was four Maries, the nicht there'll be but three. There was Marie Satan, and Marie Baton, and Marie Carmichael, and me. 
Bonnie George Campbell High up highlands, and low upon Tay, Bonnie George Campbell rade out on a day. Saddled and bridled, and gallant rade he. Hame calm his good horse, but never come he. Out come his old mither, greeting for sair, and out come his bonny bride, riving her hair. Saddled and bridled, and booted rade he, to whom hame came the saddle, but never came he. My meadow lies green, and my corn is unshorn, my barn is to build, and my babe is unborn. Saddled and bridled, and booted rade he, to whom hame came the saddle, but never came he. Bessie Bell and Mary Gray O Bessie Bell and Mary Gray, they wa twa bonny lasses, they bigot a bower on yon burn bray, and theeket it o'er with rashes. They theeket it o'er with rashes green, they theeket it o'er with heather, but the pest come fra the burrows town, and slew them baith together. They thought to lie in Methven kirkyard, among their noble kin, but they maun lie in Stronach Ha, to beak for unto the sin. And Bessie Bell and Mary Gray, they wa twa bonny lasses, they bigot a bower on yon burn bray, and they kit it o'er with rashes. THE THREE RAVENS There were three ravens sat on a tree, down a down, hey down, hey down. There were three ravens sat on a tree, with a down. There were three ravens sat on a tree, they were as black as they might be, with a down, dairy, 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 down, down. One of them said to his mate, Where shall we our breakfast take? Down in yonder green field, there lies a knight slain under his shield. His hounds they lie down at his feet, so well they can their master keep. His hawks they fly so eagerly, there's no fowl dare him come nigh. Down there comes a fallow doe, as great with young as she might go. She lifts up his bloody head, and kissed his wounds that were so red. She got him up upon her bake, and carried him to earth and lake. She buried him before the prime. She was dead herself, ere e'en song time. God send every gentleman, such hawks, such hounds, and such a leman. Lord Randall Where ha' ye been, Lord Randall, my son? Oh, where ha' ye been, my handsome young man? I have been to the wild wood. Mother, make my bed soon, for I'm weary with hunting, and fain wald lie down. Where got ye for dinner, Lord Randall, my son? Where got ye for dinner, my handsome young man? I dinned with my true love. Mother, make my bed soon, for I'm weary with hunting, and fain wald lie down. What got ye to dinner, Lord Randall, my son? What got ye to dinner, my handsome young man? I got eels boiled in bra. Mother, make my bed soon, for I'm weary with hunting, and fain wald lie down. What became of your bloodhounds, Lord Randall, my son? What became of your bloodhounds, my handsome young man? Oh, they swelled and they died. Mother, make my bed soon, for I'm weary with hunting, and fain wald lie down. Oh, I fear ye are poisoned, Lord Randall, my son. Oh, I fear ye are poisoned, my handsome young man. Oh, yes, I'm poisoned. Mother, make my bed soon, for I'm sick at the heart, and I fain would lie down. Edward Why do us your brand say drape with blood, Edward? Edward, why do us your brand say drape with blood? And why say sad gang ye o? Oh, I hae killed my hawk, say Gwid, mither, mither. Oh, I hae killed my hawk, say Gwid, and I had nae mere hot he, oh. Your hawk is blood was never say red, Edward, Edward. Your hawk is blood was never say red, my dear son, I tell ye, oh. Oh, I hae killed my right roan stide, mither, mither. I hae killed my right roan stide. That erst was say fair and fry, oh. Your stide was ald, 
and ye had got madder, Edward, Edward. Your side was old, and ye had got madder. Some other duel ye dry, o. Oh. oh, I he killed my father dire, mither, mither. I he killed my father dire. Alas, and way is me, o. Oh. And what in penance will ye dry for that, Edward, Edward? And what penance will ye dry for that, my dear son? Now tell me, o. Oh. I'll set my fight in yonder boat, mither, mither. I'll set my fight in yonder boat, and I'll fare o'er the sea, o. Oh. And what will ye do with your towers and your ha, Edward, Edward? And what will ye do with your towers and your ha that were sae fair to see, o? Oh? I'll let them stand till they down fall, mither, mither. I'll let them stand till they down fall, for here never mair mon I be, o. Oh. And what will ye leave to your bairns and your wife, Edward, Edward? And what will ye leave to your bairns and your wife when ye gang o'er the sea, o? Oh? The Walder's room, let them beg thrae life, mither, mither. The Walder's room, let them beg thrae life. For them ne'er mair will I see, O. Oh. And what will ye live to your ain mother dear, Edward, Edward? And what will ye live to your ain mother dear? My dear son, now tell me, O. Oh. The curse of hell frae me shall ye bear, mither, mither. The curse of hell frae me shall ye bear, sic counsels ye gave me, O. Oh. The Twa Brothers there were twa brethren in the north, they went to school together. The one unto the other said, We try a warsel afore. They warseled up, they warseled down, till Sir John fell to the ground, and there was a knife in Sir Willie's pouch. Guide him a deadly wound. O oh, brother dear, take me on your back, carry me to yon burn clear, and wash the blood off from my wound, and it will bleed nay mare. He took him up upon his back, carried him to yon burn clear, and washed the blood from off his wound, but I it bled the mare. O oh, brither, take me on your back, carry me to yon kirkyard, and dig a grave baith wide and deep, and lay my body there. He stained him up upon his back, carried him to yon kirkyard, and dug a grave baith deep and wide, and laid his body there. But what will I say to my father, dear? Ginny chance to say, Willie, where's John? O oh, say that he's to England gone, To buy him a cask o' wine. And what will I say to my mother, dear? Gin she chance to say, Willie, where's John? O oh, say that he's to England gone, To buy her a new silk gown. And what will I say to my sister, dear? Gin she chance to say, Willie, where's John? Oh, say that he's to England gone, to buy her a wedding ring. But what will I say to your low dear? Gin she cry, why tarries my John? Oh, tell her I lie in Kirkland fair, and home again will never come. Babylon, or the Bonnie Banks of Forty There were three ladies lived in a bower, a val bonnie, and they went out to pull a flower on the bonny banks of forty. They hadna pulled a flower but ain, when up started to them a bantish man. He's ta'en the first sister by her hand, and he's turned her round and made her stand. It's whether will ye be a rank robber's wife, or will ye die by my wee pen knife? It's all not to be a rank robber's wife, but I'll rather die by your wee pen knife. He's killed this May, and he's laid her by, for to bear the Red Rose company. He's taken the second ain by the hand, and he's turned her round and made her stand. It's whither will ye be a rank robber's wife, or will ye die by my wee penknife? I'll not be a rank robber's wife, but I'll rather die by your wee penknife. He's killed this May, and he's laid her by, for to bear the Red Rose company. He's taken the youngest dame by the hand, and he's turned her round and made her stand. Says, Will ye be a rank robber's wife, or will ye die by my wee pen knife? I'll not be a rank robber's wife, 
nor will I die by your wee penknife, for I hae a brother in this wood, and gin ye kill me, it's he'll kill thee. What's thy brother's name? Come tell to me. My brother's name is Baby Lon. O oh, sister, sister, what have I done? O oh, have I done this ill to thee? O oh, since I've done this evil deed, God shall never be seen o' me. He's taken out his wee pen knife, and he's twined himself o' his own sweet life. Child Maurice Child Maurice hunted e the silver wood, he hunted it round about, and nobody that he found therein, nor none was there without. He says, Come hither, thou little foot page, that runneth low lie by my knee, for thou shalt go to John Stuart's wife, and pray her spake with me. Ay, and greet thou do my ladies well, e'er so well from me. And as it falls as many times as knots be knit on a kell, or merchant men go to leave London either to buy or sell, and as it falls as many times as any heart can think, or schoolmasters are in any schoolhouse writing with pin and ink, for if I might as well as she may, this night I would with her speak. And here I send her a mantle of green, as green as any grace, and I bid her come to the silver wood to hunt with child Maurice. And there I send her a ring of gold, a ring of precious stone, and I bid her come to the silver wood, let for no kind of man. One while this little boy he yowed, another while he ran, until he came to John Stuart's hall. I wis he never blan. And of nurture the child had good, he ran up the hall and bower free. And when he came to this lady fair, says, God you save and see. I am come from child Maurice, a message unto thee, and child Maurice, he greets you well, and ever so well from me. And as it falls, as often times, as knots be knit on a kell, or marchant men go to leave London, either for to buy, wear, or sell, and as often times he greets you well, as any heart can think, or schoolmasters are in any school, writing with pen and ink. And here he sends a mantle of green, as green as any grace, and he bids you come to the silver wood, to hunt with child Maurice. And here he sends you a ring of gold, a ring of the precious stone. He prays you come to the silver wood, let for no kind of man. Now peace, now peace, thou little foot page, for Christ's sake I pray thee, for if my lord hear one of these words, thou must be hanged high. John Stuart stood under the castle wall, and he wrote the words every one. And he called upon his horsekeeper, Make ready you my steed. Ay, and so he did to his chamberlain, Make thou ready my weed. And he cast a lease upon his bake, And he rode to the silver wood, And there he sought all about, About the silver wood. And there he found him, child Maurice, Sitting upon a block, With a silver comb in his hands, Kembling his yellow locks. But then stood up him, child Maurice, and said these words truly. I do not know your lady, he said, if that I do her see. He says, How now, how now, child Maurice, a lake, how may this be? For thou hast sent her love tokens, more now than two or three. For thou hast sent her a mantle of green, as green as any grace, and bade her come to the silver wood, to hunt with child Maurice. And thou hast sent her a ring of gold, a ring of precious stone, And bade her come to the silver wood, let for no kind of man. And by my faith, now, child Maurice, the tone of us shall die. Now be my troth, said child Maurice, and that shall not be I. But then he pulled forth a bright brown sword, and dried it on the grace. And so fast he smote at John Stuart, I wisse he never did rest. Then he pulled forth his bright brown sword, and dried it on his sleeve, and the first good stroke John Stuart's stroke, child Maurice's head did he cleave. And he pricked it on his sword's point, went singing there beside, and he rode till he came to that lady fair, whereas this lady lied. And says, 
Dost thou know child Maurice's head, if thou dost it see? And lap it soft, and kiss it oft, if thou lovest him better than me. But when she looked on child Maurice's head, she never spake words but three. I ne'er be no children but one, and you have slain him truly. Says, wicked be my merry men all. I gave meat, drink, and cloth, but could they not have holden me when I was in all that wrath? For I have slain one of the courteous knights that ever bestrode a steed. So have I done one of the fairest ladies that ever wear woman's weed. THE WIFE OF USHER'S WELL There lived a wife at Usher's Well, and a wealthy wife was she. She had three stout and stalwart sons, and sent them o'er the sea. They hadna been a week from her, a week but barely ain, when word came to the Carolyn wife that her three sons were gain. They hadna been a week from her, a week but barely three, when word came to the Carolyn wife that her sons she'd never see. I wish the wind may never cease, nor flashes in the flood, till my three sons come hame to me in earthly flesh and blood. It fell about the matin mass, when nights are long and mirk, the Carlin wife's three sons came hame, and their hats were o' the berk. It neither grew in sky nor ditch, nor yet in only slough, but at the gates of paradise, that birk grew fair enew. Blow up the fire, my maidens, bring water from the well, for my house shall feast this night, since my three sons are well. And she made to them a bed, she's made it large and wide, and she's ta'en her mantle about her, sat down at the bedside. Up then crew the red, red cock, and up crew the grey, the eldest to the youngest said, "'Tis time we were away." The cocky had na crawed but once, and clappin' his wings at a, when the youngest to the eldest said, Brother, we must away. The cock doth caw, the day doth daw, the channer and worm doth chide. Gin we be missed out o' our place, a sair pairn we maud bide. Fare ye will, my mother dear, fare weel to bairn and byre, and fare ye will the bonny lass that kindles my mother's fire. Sweet William's Ghost When bells were rung, and mass was sung, I wot a man to Beth were gone. Clark Sanders came to Margaret's window, With money and a sad sigh and groan. Are ye sleeping, Margaret, he says, Or are ye waking presently? Give me my faith and trouth again, A wot true love I gie to thee. Your faith and troth ye's never get, nor our true love shall never twin, Till ye come with me to my bower, And kiss me both cheek and chin. My mouth is full of cold, Margaret, It has the smell now of the ground, And if I kiss thy comely mouth, Thy days will not be long. Cocks are crowing a merry mid-larf, I wot the wild full-boded day. Give me my faith and troth again, And let me fare me on my way. Thy faith and troth thou shalt nay get, nor our true love shall never twin, till ye tell me what comes of women, o' what that's dine in strong travelling. Their beds are made in the heavens high, down at the foot of our good Lord's knee, well set about with gilly flowers, a what sweet company for to see. O cocks are crowing a merry mid larf, a what in the wild fool boated day, the psalms of heaven will be sung. And ere now I'll be missed away. Up she has ta'en a bright long wand, And she has straked her troth thereon. She has given it him out at the shirt window, With mony a sad sigh and heavy groan. I thank you, Margaret, I thank you, Margaret, And I thank you heartily. Gin ever the dead come for the quick, Be sure, Margaret, I'll come again for thee. It's hose and shoon and ground a lane, she claimed the wall and followed him, Until she came to a green forest, On this she lost the sight of him. Is there any room at your head, Sanders? Is there any room at your feet? Or any room at your twa sides, Where fain, 
fain would I sleep. There is nay room at my head, Margaret, there's nay room at my feet, there's nay room at my twa sides, for ladies for to sleep. Cold meal is covering me o'er, but on my winding sheet, my bed is full low, I say, among hungry worms I sleep. Cold meal is my covering o'er, but on my winding sheet, the dew it falls nay sooner down than a it is full wheat. End of section 45